All right, hello and welcome to today's video by the AM Academy. Today, we'll be unboxing, unpacking, and setting up the Halot Sky from Creality. It is a resin 3D printer that we just got, so I'm excited to see what's inside the box, how it works, and uh, yeah, what the first couple print results are. So let's just get started at getting this out of the box. So, as you can see, inside that frame was another box. And uh, because this printer is actually quite heavy, best thing to unpack these is actually to do it from the bottom. So that's what we're gonna do. So at the very top, a resin bat cover. Nothing else up here. Then I have a little piece of styrofoam. Then I got oh, a replacement FEP film. So I'm gonna put that aside as well. Then more styrofoam with the lid inside. So on this printer, the lid actually comes separately, and that's what we have right here. So I'm gonna take that out of the styrofoam. It's a little unwilling. More styrofoam on the inside. Get rid of that too. So that's our cover. We're gonna have to install that on the printer itself. Gonna put it aside for now. Another thing of styrofoam. And there's our user manual along with all the accessories. We'll have a closer look at those in a minute. Power cable. And now I can just lost some cardboard down the back. Don't worry, it was nothing critical, but when lifting this piece of styrofoam off the printer, a piece of cardboard fell off the back. Okay, more styrofoam. And now really I've only got the printer and the reservoir left. So let me put this aside a little more. And this is gonna be interesting. I'm not sure how to best get the printer out of there because it is quite heavy and it's really deep in this styrofoam packaging. I think my best bet is actually to just rip this side of styrofoam away. Because now I have some more space to actually lift it. All right. Plastic, more styrofoam. Away with it all. Our printer. Ladies and gentlemen, looks really, really nice. Big metal construction, as I said, it's actually quite heavy. Looks really solid, really like the setup. Big reservoir, resin tank, whatever you want to call it. Big screen, screen is vertical, which I find quite interesting. Usually on these sort of printers, you have a horizontal uh, screen landscape. This one is portrait mode. The protective film was already half pulled off, which is a little sad, so I've got a bunch of dust and dirt on my screen. A little unfortunate, doesn't feel as good. Put that aside, and now I gotta look through my accessory kit because there have to be screws somewhere to install the, the lid on my printer. So let's open up the accessory kit and have a look at everything that is inside. Right, first up, there is a calibration card, which is basically just a piece of paper, camera, try and get sharp. The calibration card is just a piece of paper for the printer to uh, calibrate. Then there's a warranty information card. 
and of course the user manual. And usually the Creality user manuals are quite nice, especially when getting started uh, with lots of detailed ooh, image instructions, such as right here, where it actually tells us how to get the lid on top. So that's what we're gonna do now. Let's see where the screws are. Here I have four screws and three hex keys. So that's what we're gonna use now. So using our hex key, we got the lid fixed. Let's have a look at the front. I can just open it like this. That's where it stays. That's what the metal little tab was for. That's how it locks itself against the frame when it's fully opened. And then when it comes down, there's like uh, foam right here in order to lock it on the bottom. Beautiful. What else is in the accessory kit? We've got a metal scraper to get your prints off the built platform. Um, it's nice and wide, though it isn't very sharp. You've got the plastic scraper to go inside the tub. Don't use this, it'll damage your FEP film. Instead, get yourself a silicone squeegee. It's way better than this. Um, we have a brush, uh, like a paintbrush, probably to clean resin out of the vat. Um, not sure I like this a lot because usually, especially these cheap ones, um, they like come apart and then you have all these things inside your resin. So um, I will not be using this, but Guess it's nice of them to include that. We've got a USB drive, which I assume has the slicing software and maybe a couple of model parts on it. And then of course we have a couple of filters for the resin. So that's everything there is in the accessory kit. As I mentioned earlier, there is a vat cover that you can put on top of your resin tank whenever you're not using it and replacement FEP film. Um, so those are the add-ons, so to speak. And now I'll take a power cable I prepared and just plug it in for the first time. See what happens. Let's open it up. We have a nice little boot menu with a, a little Creality guy that does a jumping celebrating motion. It's cute. Okay, and it's ready. It just has two buttons on the screen saying file and settings. Let's check file. There's a file in there and there's settings, printing settings, clean system settings, service, and device binding. Let's go into system settings, and I will connect it to our Wi-Fi. So uh, I guess once it is connected, I will have the option of giving it over the air updates um, for firmware and software. So that's what I'll be looking for. So next, I'll add it to the Wi-Fi. Okay, so we've got the printer connected to the Wi-Fi, so that'll let us uh, local upgrade in the UDIS directory. Now, I, I can't find where to update it over the air yet. I'll do that later on. For now, I want to have more looks at what this thing can actually do. Let's move the Z axis up a bit, auto homing. So we'll just do that. Uh, the whole assembly, it's all made out of metal. Literally, like everything I can see aside from the display, of course, is made of metal. Uh, so really, really rigid assembly, um, two linear guide rails along with a ball screw for the Z-axis movement. There's also a ton of grease in there. Uh, the built plate, I can just get that out of there now, has this nice little way of slotting on top of this hanging assembly. And there's a little screw inserted from the top. Let me get a little closer to the camera for this. There's a little screw up here at the top that then sticks out the bottom. And that is basically a nub that ensures you uh, always put the built plate into the printer the correct way around. If I try to do it the other way, uh, it'll get stuck halfway and I'll notice that it's wrong. So I'll always put the platform in the right way around. Uh, that's kind of nice. There's basically an end stop. So I won't put it uh, farther in than it is supposed to go. That's kind of nice. Uh, the belt plate itself, it's tapered to the sides so resin will flow off properly. On the bottom, it's got this nice little roughed up surface, so I assume 
The first couple of prints will stick to it really nicely. Um, yeah, other than that, it's got the standard four calibration screws on the sides. Uh, comes pre-calibrated from the factory, but you know, it's always wise to still do the leveling and um, calibration procedure once when you get a new printer. So let's put that back in there. Now I get to remove the last piece of styrofoam that was in this package. And then that in turn lets me unscrew the sides of the resin tank a little more and remove that. So it comes off like this. There looks to be a protective cover on top of the screen actually. It's like the, the type of glass you put on your phone. So that's interesting. And of course the reservoir quite nice. There's a, a lot of dirt on this FEP film right now. So I would actually not start printing like this. There's a lot of dirt inside here all around. That surprises me considering how high quality everything else is, but this would actually impact my first couple of prints most likely until I cleaned it properly. So minus points for that. Other than that, it is nice. I can remove the screws entirely, of course. Um, it does have little feet, so I could put it on the table like this without it collecting dust or damaging the FEP film. Um, so yeah, other than that, it's not much more to say. These types of printers are fairly simple in terms of the machine itself. The real difficulty comes when slicing the parts. Right now, really only one moving part, and that is the Z-axis. Um, bonus points on this, the cover. It's quite a nice system. Uh, it's much nicer than the other Creality printers like the one we have down there, where you have a cover that you need to lift off completely, put aside, and then put down. This type of setup saves you a lot of desk space uh, when you are working with it. Um, the build volume is actually really big. You can fit a whole liter of resin into this uh, resin tank. However, that does also mean that the minimum fill line that it indicates is at 500 milliliters. So you, you, know, you need to have quite a lot of resin in the, in the tank just in order to be able to start a print. Um, what I don't like about the resin tank is A, that it's kind of dirty and that it, has, uh, it doesn't really have a spigot to pour the leftover resin out of. Um, that of course only relevant if you frequently change resins or you know, want to clean the resin tank properly. But, you know, it's something. There's a USB, um, now I'm missing the words. There's a female USB type A plug here, I believe it is. And a USB, the type that is on your USB sticks. USB, USB type B, I believe. Um, on the side, so uh, that's probably your interface. As I said, it also connects to the Wi-Fi. And on the back, there's literally just the power plug and a power switch. So. That's everything I have for now, I guess. I went through all the accessories. I went through the printer and its accessories itself, the hood, and now it is time to actually calibrate it and then start printing. So thanks very much for watching until here, and I'll see you next time, hopefully with some prints to compare.